Hi everyone, it's Rachel here from St Lawrence Church and I'm a bit sad today because I'm bringing our last ever lockdown parable. Well, I hope it's the last one ever. I have really enjoyed learning some great morals and values and lessons about life from what's been going on in lockdown and also from the Bible. Have you? I hope so. So today's parable is called the parable of the socially distanced son. Now, the person in our story this week is called Brad. And I'm being Brad. I've got my hat on. I'm really cool. Don't say otherwise. Um, and when lockdown started, he thought, oh, no, you know what? I'm going to be stuck for weeks and weeks and weeks on end with my parents. And they're really boring. I don't like them. I'm going to get out of here, I'm going to go somewhere more fun, you know at my friend's house, that's where it's at, I'm going to go and live with my friends. And so he said to his parents, I don't want to live with you in lockdown, I'm going. And off he went to his friend's house and he got there and he was uninvited but he kind of barged his way in and he was like, yeah, we're going to have a party because it's lockdown and we're going to have loads of fun together. And, and at first, his friend was like, oh yeah, okay, that's, that's going to be fun. And they had lots of fun together, and they played games, and they did lots of really great things. But a couple of weeks into lockdown, um, they ran out of things to do together, and it got a bit boring in his friend's house. Um, his parents didn't have the money to buy him any snacks or, or any more new games, and he just got a bit bored. His friend's parents were like, why on earth are you in our house? Um, it's really hard for us just to look after our own family, so you're gonna you're gonna have to go, Brad. You're gonna have to go, and so they sent Brad out. Brad went out into the street, and he's like, mm, you know what? I can't I can't go back to my parents' house. I was really rude, really really rude to them, and they're probably gonna hate me for that, aren't they? I can't go back to my friend's house because they don't think I'm fun anymore. And, I don't think any of my other friends will want me either. We just walked on the streets. Brad ended up sleeping on the streets a few nights and that was really scary. And then he ended up kind of doing some jobs that he didn't really want to do. Kind of picking up litter and, and things like that. And I was thinking, oh, I really wish I could go back to my parents' house. Really, really wish I could. But lockdown's still on and I'm probably not allowed to because I've been in someone else's house. And then the weeks went on and we got to a point when lockdown was coming to an end. Maybe that we're really, really looking forward to, aren't we guys? Brad was like, life outside of my parents' house, it really sucks. It really, really sucks. I thought it was going to be amazing. I thought it was going to be parties all the time. I thought it was going to be fun and games, but it's not. Not, it's hard and it's scary. So we trudged back to his parents' house. He was coming down the road. Dad saw him out the window. And he was like, oh, Mum, look, look, Brad, Brad's coming home. And you know what? They'd been sat at the window every day in lockdown, really upset that Brad had gone. Really missing him. Really, really sad that he'd gone and hoping that he'd come back. And even though he'd been really rude to them, they, they just loved him and they missed him. And they saw him coming down the road. And his dad was like, yeah! And he got up and he ran. And he ran out the road and he ran round to find him. He forgot about the social distancing. Because you know what? It was over. And he just brought up, grabbed his, put his arms out wide and he grabbed Brad and he pulled him into a big bear hug. Oh, what would we do for some big bear hugs with our family right now, with our grandmas and our granddads? We would do a lot of things. And he invited said, Brad, come back into our house. We've missed you so much. We need you. We want you. We love you. And they brought Brad back in. And they had another big party to celebrate that he was back home. Because they really missed him. Now, I wonder what you think about that story. I really hope none of you have been that rude to your parents in lockdown. Rude enough to go and live somewhere else. I don't know. I wonder... How you will feel when you're able to go and visit people again and give them big bounds. I know I'm going to be really happy 
at that moment and really excited to welcome people back into my arms and our hearts. Now this week's lockdown parable reminds me a little bit of a parable that Jesus told in the Bible and I'm going to read it for you out of my Bible and I hope you enjoy it. It's called A Story of Forgiveness. Jesus told a story about a farmer who had two sons. The farmer was teaching his sons all about farming so that when he died, they could take over. However, one day, the younger son approached his father with an idea. Hmm. I've been thinking, father, he said, nervously. I'm grown up and it's time I saw a bit of the world. It would help if I could have my share of the farm now in cash. Now the farmer loved his son's beer and he didn't even have to think about the decision. He counted out hundreds of silver coins into bags and did them to the excited lad. Thank you father, he said, packing his bags to set off, you won't regret it. And the farmer watched, tears in his eyes, as his younger son left home. For a while the farmer's son had a wonderful time, he lived like a prince visiting the finest cities, eating out every night and going to parties. He was surrounded by people who wanted to be his friend. But the problem was, they helped him spend all of his money. When the silver was gone, his friends vanished too. The young man found himself alone and far from home, without even a few pennies to buy a loaf of bread. To make matters worse, a dreadful drought swept through the land, causing a terrible famine. The farmer's son couldn't even beg for food because no one had enough for themselves. Luckily, he found a job as a pig keeper, but the wages were pitiful. He had hardly enough money left to buy food after paying his rent, and some days he was so hungry, he nearly ate the food for the pigs. One day he decided enough was enough. I want to go home, he groaned. I'll beg my father for his forgiveness for being such an idiot. He's bound to be furious, but maybe if I grovel, if I beg, he'll let me stay and work as one of his farm labourers. The miserable, ragged young man arrived home and couldn't believe how overjoyed his father was to see him. I've worried about you and missed you every day, son. The farmer cried, hugging and kissing him. The ashamed son sobbed as he told his father what had happened. Never mind, the farmer said to his son's utter astonishment. You're back home now and we're together again. That's all that matters. Later, the farmer's elder son came home from a hard day's work in the fields to find the party in full swing. The neighbours had been invited over to celebrate and a feast had been prepared, there was music and dancing and people were drinking wine. What's going on here? he asked. And one of the servants explained what had happened. The farmer swung his elder son round in a jig. Rejoice, he cried, your little brother has finally come home. What do you mean, rejoice? I'm completely furious. I stayed with you all these years, working my fingers to the bone. You've never even given me as much as a thank you. Let alone thrown me a party. Then he turns up, having wasted most of your fortune, and you're celebrating how wonderful he is. You have no idea how much your faithfulness means to me, the farmer said to his elder son drawing him close in a hug. Everything I have, I give to you. But today is a day to be glad, for your brother was lost and gone forever, but he has come home. I wonder how that story makes you feel. Does it make you feel happy that the younger son came home and that they were reunited? Or are you a little bit angry like the older son, that your brother wasted time and money and all of those things when he could have been at the farm helping. Hmm. I wonder if we waste things. I wonder if we waste time with our families, if we waste our money on things that don't really matter. You know what? 
I wonder if it's people that we need to forgive in the same way that the father forgave his son. Perhaps as friends who last year you fell out with when you were at school, that you need to say, you know what, I forgive you, let's be friends again when we go start back in September. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed the last of my lockdown parables. It's been a real fun to have time with you each week and I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned a lot. And I'm just going to pray for your summer holidays, guys. So, like we do in school, we put our hands together and close our eyes. Father God, thank you so much for getting us through these last few months of homeschool and school in bubbles and, and just strange times when we've been in isolation. I pray that the time will come soon when there can be lots of hugs and cuddles. I pray that all of the children would have an amazing summer and that we can be back together in school in September, learning and laughing and playing together. Amen. Have a great summer, guys. Bye.